Summer means holidays and holidays mean frozen cocktails. So if you're looking for some easy, surefire frozen cocktail recipes, then this is the episode for you. You might be thinking that frozen cocktails are just party drinks, but there's no reason why they can't be as delicious and carefully crafted as your other drinks this summer. They may be fun, but no need to let your standards slip. We've already taken a look at some important factors to consider whenever you're concocting whatever icy cold beverage takes your fancy, and you can find a link to that episode below. But here are some old favorites to start the party and make sure that you stay tuned until the end because I'll even be forgoing the blender and trying an entirely new technique, well, new to me anyway, which comes very highly recommended and could save you from being chained to your Vitamix at your next party. Before we get to making though, I'd quickly like to thank Jesse, Tom, Marcos, Karen, and Dave and Cheryl for signing up and supporting us on Patreon. If you would also like to support Behind the Bar, then Patreon is an awesome way to do that and you get bonus content, so a bit of a win-win. Um, you could also look at enrolling in our online bartending course or if you're after some new swag, then check out our merch. If you're not in a position to support financially, then that's obviously totally fair, um, but sharing episodes or telling friends really helps. You could follow us on the socials or head over to withcaradivine.com and watch every cocktail we've ever made from A to Z. Well, actually A to W because we haven't made the zombie yet. Check out all of those links in the description below. Call me crazy, but I tend to like to start at the beginning and the strawberry daiquiri is actually one of the earliest written frozen cocktail recipes. It appeared in a 1952 book imaginatively named Electric Blender Recipes by Mabel Stegner. And this was just as the electric blender was becoming commonplace in households, opening up a world of frozen possibilities. And as always, we're gonna get our garnish prep first, so we'll do that now. What we're just gonna do is half the strawberry down the middle. I like to keep the little green bit on the ends, another little pop of color. Then you can kind of spread it into a little strawberry fan. So we're gonna go four or five frozen strawberries, or you can just pop some fresh ones in there for a little hour or two beforehand if you like as well. And 60 mils of rum. I'm using Plantation Three Star because it's quite a full-bodied and fruity white rum, so it stands up really nicely in this drink. Then we're gonna go 30 mils of lime juice. Thirty mils of sugar syrup. Don't be afraid of just of kind of packing in a bit more than you normally would. Then we're going to go about a cup of ice. If you have bigger cubes, um, then you definitely want to give it a bash. These ones uh, that we have in the ice machine here are actually fairly flimsy, so they'll probably be fine. But I am just going to play on the safe side because I definitely don't want to break the blender um, and just give them a quick little hit with the hammer first. Pop the lid on and we're going to give it a whiz. You're not going to whiz for too long because actually the blender will start to heat up and kind of introduce heat to it um, if you have it on a high setting for a long time. Um, so it's a pretty kind of short, sharp and get the job done type situation. So really as soon as you can see um, that you've got all of your ice uh, chips are properly kind of blended through, um, then you're ready to stop. Then we're going to take our chilled glass out of the freezer. Pop on our little strawberry and then you can add in a straw because obviously these are not the easiest things to drink without one. I do tend to favour glass ones because metal get really cold and then paper can go a little bit soggy. So these little ones from Surfside Sips are actually pretty perfect and it's quite a good texture because it's just about holding the straw up but you know definitely not too stiff. And there we have a strawberry daiquiri. From one esteemed frozen drink to another, it would be impossible to make a video on frozen drinks and not include the margarita. The margarita slushy holds a special place in the drinking culture of the United States, so much so that the first ever slushy machine is enshrined in the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History. 
So I'd better show you how to make a yummy version in your blender at home. So working nice and quickly to make our frozen margarita, we're going to cut a lime wheel for garnish. Um, so just quite nice and thin off a of fresh lime. Only at this point, gonna grab my tequila and the Cointreau out of the freezer. Um, and then I've already got my sugar syrup and lime kind of sitting just beside me here in the fridge. So we're gonna go 60 mils of tromba. I always like to use Blanco tequilas for margaritas because it's that bit kind of fresher. And then we're gonna go 20 mils of orange liqueur. I'm going with Cointreau, it's that little bit kind of zestier and zingier. 15 mils of sugar syrup. Although it feels pretty weird to me putting added sweetener into a margarita, it does really need it for the balance, but also just the texture. It kind of binds everything together quite nicely. And then 20 mils of lime juice. I'm not going a full shot of lime because you do want to lean to the sweeter side. Then about a cup of ice, you can go just under the smaller part of your shaker tin, and that's about a good amount. And that just goes in as well. And then to whiz it up, we're just gonna start it off a little bit slow for a bit until it kind of gets going. And then nice and high, literally just until all of the ice is dissolved. So kind of as soon as you can cut it then do so that it doesn't start to actually heat up the liquid inside. Then grab your um, glass out of the freezer. We are gonna do a salt rim on this, even though obviously you're drinking through a straw, it's maybe not strictly necessary, but it just doesn't really feel right to not put a salt rim on a margarita. Just doing it at the end so that the glass is still in the freezer for as long as possible. Then we'll just go a little lime wheel and a straw. Frozen margarita. Now, the only problem with making banging frozen drinks like these last two for your friends is that they might not want you to stop and standing at the blender all party long can start to feel like a little bit of a chore. So, is there something that you can do to prepare delicious frozen drinks ahead of time? Well, funny you should ask. Adding ice into your blender is basically just freezing and diluting your drink, so is there another way of achieving this? Well, yes, you could just pre-dilute and then freeze. A boozy granita style drink is a great thing to have prepared in your freezer for a party and you can either keep it lighter and more sorbet style or loosen it out with a frozen spirit of your choice. This recipe is literally endlessly adaptable, so try mixing it up with your favorite fortified wines or mari, different liqueurs and juices. So to get started, we're gonna juice up some citrus juice to go in here. Keep the nice one for show and go with the older one here. Uh, so one pretty big grapefruit there is giving me about 100 mils worth of juice, which is pretty perfect. And then we want about 100 mils worth of the same of orange juice, just for that kind of rounder, more sweet citrus flavor. Now, of course you can strain this, but I think as long as you make sure you don't have any um, like actual seeds or anything going in there, I actually quite like having little bits of like the flesh kind of um, through it that you can have a little chew on if you feel like it. About 200 mils of fruit juice. Then we're gonna go 200 mils of the Casamariol vermouth, uh, which is a Spanish white vermouth with lots of really juicy citrus notes, which works really well here. Then about 100 mils of whatever liqueur you're using, so a little peach liqueur for me here. Or you could go for something else like an apricot brandy, whatever you have to hand, it will be pretty hard to go wrong. And then just 100 mils of water. So obviously you do have the juice in there, you don't really need it for the dilution, um, but it does just help the texture kind of set that little bit more, um, as I said, kind of like more sorbet-like. So kind of up to yourself at this point, but I'm gonna go 100 mils of water. Now that's just gonna get popped in your freezer, um, preferably overnight, but I'm sure, you know, if you gave it kind of four or five hours, you'd probably be pretty happy with it as well. Now, obviously should have done this before I got stuff out the freezer, but sometimes I forget. Just gonna do a quick little grapefruit wedge garnish for this one. And we can see that our granita's gone pretty solid. I wouldn't quite be holding it above my head, but you know, it's not too bad. So just give it a bit of a mix through, kind of flake it. You just got this lovely little kind of uh, tasty, fruity snow ice, basically. Uh, and then also from the freezer, I've grabbed out some gins. So I'm just gonna go one shot of the gin in here, obviously kind of up to yourself, um, depending how lit your party is. But for the beginning of the day, I think a little 30 mils is plenty. And then I'm just gonna spoon my granita in on top. So a nice, generous serving. 
We'll pop in our little grapefruit wedge and we can go a little mint sprig as well. Really, whatever you have hanging around that's just bright and colorful and is gonna look pretty. And last but not least, nice straw. And there we have a little party granita slushy. Three easy and delicious frozen cocktails, perfect for summer or just a night with the heater blasting. So now you know.